So section 2.6 is going to discuss pretty much what your your one homework assignment is going to be about that is the, the one that's not just your problem set one that you're going to do for me uh, later this semester which is fit a sine or cosine curve to some data so how is that going to look well let's take a look at the example that I have for you on that Desmos link which is the average monthly temperature in Anchorage, Alaska. So, yeah, nice, you know, it's kind of got, you know, what looks like might be the beginnings of a sine or cosine shape. But to make it a little bit more clear, what I'll do for us is I took my data set and I'm just gonna extend it. I'm gonna repeat those values on the y-axis here, and that's gonna give me another set of data. And okay, that's starting to look like a, a sine or a cosine wave pattern. So great. So let's say we're going to try and fit a sine function to that. Well, it looks like a sine graph, right? And I press the sine uh, sine button, and they're like, well, that's not looking like a really good fit to this data. One thing that's wrong is that this isn't high enough. I've got to have this going up and down around here, centered around someplace in the middle. So the first thing I could do is figure out, well, where should I have, where should I move this up to? Because the general form of your equation, when you work with these sine and cosine functions, is going to look like this. Y equals A times the sine of BX plus C plus D. And with all four of these values, A, B, C, and D, they're called parameters. With all four of those, you should really be able to fit a lot of different types of data. So we're going to look at that in particular with this one. So let me cut back to the graph here and say, well, you know what? I got to shift this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate D. D is going to be the average of the high and the low. I want to get right there in the middle for my sine function, so that's what I'll do. I'll figure out what D is. So I'll take the high value here, and I can click on that, 56.6, plus the low value here, and find the average. And that average is 40.6. So instead of just doing Y equals sine of X, how about if I do Y equals sine of X plus 40.6? And let's get rid of this one. Well, that's a little bit better, right? It's not all that great yet. What else do I got to do? Well, it'd be nice if my sine function went up and down uh, at the same height as these do. What is that height from the top of one to the bottom of the next? What is that height? Yeah. So that distance is twice our amplitude. So if I take that distance and divide it by two, say 56.6 minus 24.6 divided by 2. Oh, that's 16. So that's giving me my value for A. So I'll put that out in front here. Let's turn that part of the graph on. And now at least I'm getting in the ballpark of things, getting better, I'm taking these changes one at a time. The next thing I gotta adjust is the period of the graph. Now you might remember from our work earlier in this course, that B affects the period. So the period, can remember what the period is for this? 2 pi over B. 2 pi over B. Now, in my case, um, I've got 12 equals 2 pi over B because this data is going to repeat itself every 12 months. So I can solve for B, and B is going to equal 2 pi over 12, or basically pi over 6. So great let's do that let's add that in and that's going to bring about an even better change so now the decimal value for pi over six is about 0 0.524 523 i should probably have 524 there doesn't matter um, but we're going to go from this graph to this graph and that's looking a lot lot better isn't it now, there's only one thing I have left to do, and is that I've got to shift this graph horizontally. I've got to move that over so that my data overlaps this data. Basically, I want this maximum to occur where this one is. So 
what am I going to put in so that it shifts it? Now the shift is going to be given by this part right here, the plus C. That's going to be your phase shift. So our phase shift is going to equal negative C over B. That's going to be your phase shift. How much you're shifting it left or right. Now I'll give you a little heads up. Different authors or different websites might do things a little bit different. They might write their functions as y equals a sine bx minus c plus d. And if you have a minus here, you're not going to have a minus here. The phase shift here would be simply c over b. So. I don't know. I like a plus here. It just feels more user-friendly, but whatever. So you can solve for the phase shift. <clears throat> Basically, you're going to have negative C over B has to equal 7. That's where your maximum is. So what's the value of C that makes that happen? Well, that value is going to be uh, 2.092 when you solve for it and so um, you don't have to make this little slider bar here uh, I did it for dramatic effect but um, let's slide that value over into place and ooh ah bam that's kind of cool we nailed it that data looks spot-on to be a sine wave type function so this is what I'm going to ask you to do later in the course. I'm going to ask you to fit a sine wave and a cosine wave to some data, uh, just like this. Hopefully, it'll be an easy, quick uh, 30 or 40-ish points for you to do exactly what I've done here. And of course, I'll help you out along the way. Before we get there, let's practice a couple problems of our own. And these are taken right out of the homework might be a little bit easier to read if I came up with it from here. Uh, let's see. There we go. The current I in amperes is uh, flowing through an uh, alternating current circuit at time t is given, uh, given below. What is the period? What is the amplitude? What is the phase shift? Graph the function over two periods. Set up a win window to perfectly fit the graph. So let's take a look at this one and run through the easy parts first. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to uh, write this one down real quick. Um, I of t equals 120 sine of 30 pi t minus pi over 3, uh, t is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, let's see what we can figure out about this. First of all, what's the amplitude? That should be an easy one. Yeah. 120. You don't need the absolute value, it's already positive, so it's just 120. Perfect, thank you. How about the period? What am I going to do to find the period? Have you any suggestions there? What would I do to find the period? Awesome. Thank you. 2 pi over 30. Actually, 2 pi over 30 pi, which simplifies to 1 15th. So, okay. Beautiful. And there's one other thing that I want to know here. What's the phase shift? Phase shift. It's going to be equal negative C over B. And here, tricky question. What is C for this case? Thank you. It's negative pi over 3. All right, because remember, when we do our phase shift, it's assuming that this C is positive. So if I've got something like this, 30 pi times T minus... You can actually think of that as 30 pi t plus negative pi over 3. So that's, that value for c is negative. 
So let's see, it's be negative pi over three divided by 30 pi. So this is a fraction phobes nightmare, <laughs> complex fraction like this. Let's take care of it a little piece at a time. What happens with the double negatives? Becomes positive. So it's pi over three. And how about if I write that divided by 30 pi over one? Does that hurt anything? Just writing that as over one? I think Ben, you've got the right idea. Why did I write it like that? Where am I headed? Now that you've got it like this, you can invert and multiply. So in particular, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So that's 1 over 30 pi. Is there any simplification here? Pi cancels out. Pi cancels out. What are we left with? 9. 1 over 90. 1 over 90. That's your phase shift. Beautiful. There's one last challenge that I threw in here, just because I'm a nice guy, and that is, what if you wanted to set up your calculator to perfectly show just two periods of this graph? What would your window be? Hmm. Well, let's suppose we start at zero on the x-axis. So our window would be zero on the x-axis. Where do I want to go? How far do I have to go if I want to get to show exactly two periods? Where should I go? Yeah, two times that. So two times one over 15 or zero and two over 15. That's in the x direction. So that's x min, x max. How about y min and y max? Someone from my Zoom. What's the lowest and highest that I need to go? Very close. You want to go up to 120 and down to negative 120. Yeah. Perfect. That should give me exactly two periods of this graph if I wanted to be kind of really spot on about this. So let's take a look here. Uh, let's clear out that, this. Um, now, as I graph this, I'm not going to use T, I'm going to use X. So it's going to be 120 sine of 30 pi X, X minus pi over 3. Uh, pi divided by 3. And now I want to set up my window. Wait, so you, doesn't it need brackets over pi over 3? Great question. No. It doesn't. Because you're just subtracting that. So it'll subtract. When it, when it does the calculation, division comes before subtraction. So it'll do the division and then it'll do the subtraction. So good question. It doesn't need uh, the brackets there. Window, 0, 2 divided by 15. Now, if you let x scale be that big, you're not really going to see anything. So maybe I want to do 1 divided by 15. That way I can see something. Negative 120 to 120. I probably shouldn't leave y scale equal to 1 because that would give me like 240 tick marks up and down the y-axis. And my y-axis would be kind of crowded there. So let me choose, say, 40 for y scale and then graph. Beautiful. Exactly two periods of the graph. It perfectly fits into my window. If you did 1 over 15, where? Oh, yeah, it did 1 over 15. Yeah, you, you could do anything you want for the scale. I mean, you could use, say, 0 0.05 if you wanted to. I mean, I, 
what I'm looking for is is, uh, is that the graph fits the window perfectly. I mean, this this is finesse a little bit on the X scale and Y scale. I'm just trying to make it a little bit better and adept at graphing these things. But I mean, the, the point is not necessarily to become a perfect grapher of these kinds of things uh, on the graphing calculator. Um, you should have an idea, and these are things that can help you, but you know, you don't have to be perfect with it. All right, this kind of problem might even be extra credit. We'll have to see how it goes. Thanks for the question. Anything else? Let's actually try and do some curve fitting like we did just a minute ago. And let's go to this example. Uh, actually, you know what? Oh, this one's actually going to work in the opposite direction. So this is for the graph. Um, they're giving you this phase shift. Write the equation of a sine function that has the following characteristics. Amplitude of 3, a period of 6 pi, and a phase shift of negative 1 fifth. All right. So we'll have to reverse engineer one here. I'm going to write down the relevant information. So we got y equals a sine of omega x minus phi. And I want the amplitude equal to 3, the period equal to 6 pi, and the phase shift equal to negative 1 fifth. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this. Well, the amplitude equals 3, that should be kind of a gimme, right? The amplitude equals 3, then my function is going to look like 3 times sine of something. So that part I'm hoping that you're okay with. Let's try and focus our attention on figuring out what this is. Now it looks like a W the way I've drawn it. If you actually looked at it on the handout, it might look more like a kind of a really wild looking W. And that W is really an omega. So where does omega fit in? Well, the period in this graph, in this way of writing it, is going to be 2 pi divided by omega. Or if you solve for omega, omega equals 2 pi divided by the period. So what's the period going to equal in this case? Or what's omega going to equal, I should say? Does that simplify at all? One third? Okay, sounds good. So this is a one third x minus b. Now, I gave you a little disclaimer a little bit ago, and that was your phase shift. Your phase shift is negative c over b if you have a plus here. If you write it as a minus, then it's just going to be C over B. So I'm not sure how you want to handle this. It's going to be kind of up to you, personal preference. Um, let's see here, the phase shift for us is going to be uh, phi over omega. And since we already know what omega is, it's going to be phi over one third. And that phase shift is supposed to equal negative one fifth. So again, we get something which is a fraction lover's, well, not nightmare, but probably not excited about this. Phi over one third equals negative one fifth. And let's see what we can do with that. How about if we clean up the left-hand side first? Now we, um, not yet. Not yet. Let's, let's hold off on that. You're dividing something by one-third. When you divide by a fraction, it's the same as doing what? Multiplying by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of one-third? Three. So this is really like 
3 over 1 times phi equals, oops, not negative 1 15th. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. Um, equals negative 1 fifth. So in other words, this is 3 phi equals negative 1 fifth. Almost done. Now earlier today we had a problem like this and I made a suggestion as to how to solve. You could divide both sides by 3, but yeah, there's probably a more user-friendly way to solve this. To solve 3 phi equals negative 1 fifth. What was that user-friendly way? Yeah, multiply by the reciprocal of 3. So 1 third times 1 third. And that's going to leave me with phi equals what? Negative 1 fifteenth. All right. So last but not least, we're going to put that put into um, this model. Y equals A sine of omega x minus phi. So that all turned out to be 3 times the sine of, where was it, um, 1 third x minus negative 1 15th. Yeah, somebody in the front row kindly said, oh, well, that's the same thing as plus 1 15th. Yay. And that's it. Good here? Good on that one? All right. Thank you. Let's get to some of the heavy hitter ones, like example C. Example C comes right out of uh, your homework. I think I've already given you an example like this. We, we did run through one like that with you. So let's see, first of all, if we can't fit something of the form A times sine of BX plus C plus D to this data set. All right, so let's work on that. And I'll work on it here. So the first thing I want to find is, say, D. Because I want to shift my graph up so that it's in the center of my data. You remember what we did to find D? It was something with the maximum and minimum. Find the average. Yeah, find the average. So D is going to equal the average of 25 and eh, it looks like 57. 25 plus 57 over 2. So it's going to be what? Uh, 82 over 2, 41. So there's D. Now the next easy part is figuring out what A is. A is going to be the amplitude. A is going to be half of the distance between the top and the bottom. So in our case, it's going to be 57 minus 25 divided by 2. So 32 over 2 equals 16. The first two are the easiest two. The next two get progressively harder. figure out what b is, b equals 2 pi divided by the period. Look at our data. How long before this graph repeats itself in terms of the x values? How long is it going to take before those temperatures cycle back and repeat themselves? 
12 months, right? Um, so one year, but the data is given in months, so we'll stick with months. So I'll stick with your first answer there, Ben. 12. So b equals pi over 6. So yay. three down, one to go. Now keep this in mind as you're taking your test from me, for instance. I give partial credit. So if you get two of these, okay, maybe these will be a couple points. If you get another one, a couple more points, all right? Get as many partial credit points as possible. Now, the last thing is that I've got to figure out what the phase shift is. So the phase shift is going to shift things so that the maximum here occurs, uh, looks like the maximum temperature of what month? Seventh month, July? That makes sense. All right. So where is the sine function going to have its maximum? It's going to have its maximum when bx plus c equals what value? Well, bx plus c would have to equal pi over 2. So let's see what I've got here. I'm going to have to solve. Um, I'm sorry, why did that would have to equal pi over 2? Oh, great. Mm, no, pi over 2. Good question. Let's look back at the sine function. And let me see if I got it here someplace. No, I don't. Oh, here it is. What value, where does the sine function get to its largest? At what value? Yeah, at 90 degrees or pi over 2, right? That's where the sine function is the biggest. Let me give you a different look at it. Let's do that with decimals, say. Uh, let me just open up a new file here. Y equals sine of x. And let's make this a little bit bigger. Right there. Pi over 2 is where the sine function has its maximum, right? So that maximum is going to occur in the seventh month. So basically, when x equals 7, when x equals 7, b times 7 plus c, that should equal pi over 2. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm going to solve for. So are we OK with why I'm choosing pi over 2 and 7? 7 is the value of x where the maximum occurs. So I'm going to put that in. I already know what b is. So it's going to be pi over 6 times 7 plus c. That value has to equal pi over 2. Now it's just a matter of solving for C. So let's see what that gives me. That gives me um, 7 pi over 6 plus C equals pi over 2. And if you solve for C, C is going to equal pi over 2 minus 7 pi over 6. Yay. Now we can clean that up. But if, you, if you've got that number, you could actually work with that number. That would be fine. That would fit our data fine uh, if you've got that number. Let me pause here because that's the hard part right now is getting that number. Any, any more thoughts on that one? We're choosing to put in x equals 7 because the seventh month is the value of x that makes that a maximum. We choose pi over 2 because sine has its maximum at pi over 2. If this was a cosine function, where does cosine have its maximum? Remember where cosine has its maximum? Where does cosine get the biggest, at least in the unit circle? Uh, y, equals, uh, y equals cosine of x. Cosine of x gets its maximum at 0. So instead of a pi over 2 there, I would set cosine of, or I would set all that stuff equal to 0. That's where cosine has its maximum. Let's clean this up a little bit. I can do that if I get a common denominator. 
So it's going to be 3 pi over 6 minus 7 pi over 6. Subtract these and I get minus 4 pi over 6. I don't really care that it reduces down to 2 thirds pi. If you got this, my inner, my inner uh, child will be doing somersaults. So make me happy, make me really happy and get there. Overall, your data, your function should look like this. Y equals... Uh, we'll see, A was 16, sine of B, which is pi over 6 times X, minus 4 pi over 6, or 2 pi over 3 if you wanted to reduce it, plus D, which is all the way up here at 41, and that's the function that fits your data. Beautiful. Beautiful. Comments on that one? Other than, please don't put too many of these on the exam. <laughs> All right. That, that one is challenging. I, I understand it. But what I've done in this course is I've replaced something called the five-point method with this. And the five-point method, I really liked it, really thought it was cool, and other instructors used it, but uh, I've come to the decision that, you know what, it's more important for me to, for you to be able to fit a sine or cosine function to some data. I think that's a better skill, a little bit more practical. So if it's any consolation, like I said, you can feel better that we're not working with um, the five-point method. I left it out there if you want to see it. Let's see if we can't squeeze in one more. Uh, um, <laughs> in a certain city, the number of hours of sunlight in the summer solstice in 2014 was 18.36. So let me kind of zoom out a little bit on this. Um, Not getting cut off a little bit here. Uh, let's see, view down. There we go. The number of hours of sunlight on the summer solstice was 18.36, and the number of hours of sunlight in the winter solstice was 16.48. So, what that's giving you is kind of like the high and the low. So, high, for example, uh, this is example D. The high was 18.36, nothing like being precise. And the low was 6.48. All right, so it has to be a pretty northern city, I'm guessing. And the number of hours of sunlight on the winter solstice. Hint, the summer solstice occurs on the 172nd day of the year. So... So the high is at x equals 172. That's what they're giving you. There are 365 days until the next summer solstice. So that's telling you something else. The period for this one is what? 365. You want to fit a sine or a cosine to this one? Doesn't matter to me. References, cosine. So let's fit y equals a times cosine of bx plus c plus d to our data. So we've got all this information. Let's see what we can't make of it. All right. So first thing first, I need to figure out what d is. That's the, that's the low-hanging fruit. So d is going to be the average of the high and the low. That's going to be our middle value, so 6.48 plus 18.36 divided by 2. Has anyone got that one for me? What is it? 11.42. Someone else confirm it? Yeah, I got 12.42. 12.42? All right, 12.42. 
how are we going to find A, the amplitude? Yeah, subtract the two. So 18.36 minus 6.48 divided by 2. Uh, should be a little bit less than 6. Um, 5.94. So looking good. Let's next figure out what B is. B equals... 2 pi divided by the period, which is 2 pi divided by 365. And we'll leave it like that. Just 2 pi over 65, over 365. And the last thing we need to do is we need to figure out well, what's C. And we can get C this way. Um, this function, uh, cosine has a maximum, maybe I should write it up here, this has a maximum at the cosine of zero, right? Cosine of zero, that's as big as you're going to get. So when, when you're taking the cosine of zero, that's when it's the biggest. Now, you're going to get that when the value of x is 172. So when x equals 172. So I'm going to put those two things together. So that's going to mean for us we need to solve um, b, which is, well, we'll solve, let me write it out in general, bx equals c or x equals 172. So it's going to be b, which is 2 pi over 365, times 172 plus c equals 0. So 172 times 2 is going to be 364 pi over 365 plus c equals 0 or c equals negative 364 pi over 365. And that is c. Let's put all that together. y equals, where is it? So if you're curious, my brain has kind of turned to mush just like yours. So I'm happy we're at the end here. 5.94 times cosine of b, which is 2 pi over 365 x minus 364 pi over 365 plus d, which was 12.42. Nice. I promise no more than six or eight of those on an exam, so. Oh, God. <laughs> so no worries, no worries. Those are a lot to take in. I think I might have a couple more examples of this on my YouTube channel here. So if you look around, you might find one or two more. Uh, this is what I expect on the homework on a test. I might try and make some of the numbers easier. And those, some of those weren't exactly pretty, but overall you should be able to do all different phases of this process. Question? Anything else from our Zoomers? Do the hand icon up here. Yep. Let's stop this here.